Hello viewer, a warm welcome to Elimu TV where you watch and learn. I am your teacher, Madam Abigail Rachel. So far you have seen me teaching geography form 1 to form 4. Today's lesson is going to be form 1 geography, lesson 9, and I will be talking about the structure and composition of the atmosphere. Thank you. Today you're going to look about and today you're going to learn and look about the atmosphere. So about the atmosphere, I'm going to look at the composition and the structure of the atmosphere. Introduction. I will introduce what the atmosphere is. That, that includes the composition and the structure of the atmosphere. So the atmosphere, it is like all planets in the solar system, and the, and the Earth has an atmosphere around it. So in the first topics of the in the first lessons of Form 1, we looked at what a solar system is. And the solar system is made up of nine other, the Earth is also made up of nine other planets. So for today, we, are, we will only major on the atmosphere. So we see that the studies show that some of the atmosphere may have been formed about 350 million years ago. That was long, long way before even anybody was born. You see that the Earth existed from the theory part of creation, we see that there was the earth which existed, then God had to create and uh, put human beings, plants, seas, and oceans into the earth. So it existed 350 million ago. So this is the earth, the earth planet that we live in on the image that you have on the top right part of the slide. So the Earth is made up of various gases. So there are many gases that are, are in the atmosphere, and these gases, they all depend with their source of origin. Hence, we see that the elements are held up in a space by the gravitational force of the Earth. So the, the gravity that is in the Earth is what controls the the motions of the earth's surface, the gases, the particles, everything that is on earth. And you know gravity from your physics part of education. So for today, let's look at the various gases and compositions that we have. So the composition of the element in the atmosphere is not uniform, and they also vary with time and latitude. You see that what the atmosphere is made of, it is not uniform. Sometimes uh, they can be too much, in other places it can be too little, in other places it can be just moderate. And they also vary with time. For example, something like pressure. Pressure varies with time, also something like temperature. Temperature varies with time and also latitude. And the latitude, these are the imaginary lines that cross the Earth's surface. You have learned about the Greenwich Meridian, uh, the Prime Meridian, the Longitudes, and the Latitudes. Let's look at the composition of the atmosphere dry area, air. So on our image here, we have a different number of, oxy uh, different number of air that is shown on our diagram. And we have the largest air is nitrogen that amounts for 78%, followed by oxygen that amounts for 20.9%. 20, 20 we also have argon that is blue in color that amounts for 0.90%. Other gases that is in orange form amounts for 0.17%. Then we have the least amount of air is carbon dioxide that amounts for 0.03%. So we see that all these gases in the atmosphere are very useful in one way or another. For example, the nitrogen. Nitrogen is mostly useful in the formation of plant. It is mostly used by their plants. Talk about oxygen. Oxygen is mostly used by human beings and uh, animals. Argon, argon is used for lighting bulbs. Carbon dioxide is used for photosynthesis. So progressively, we we'll look at the uses of each gas in the atmosphere. To continue with our subject, so you see that these gases, they are not just found in the atmosphere, just 
just like that. Uh, we, they are released into the atmosphere in large amounts through volcanic eruptions. And volcanic eruption, this is a major disturbance of the Earth's surface, where we have the magma when it becomes too hot uh, under the Earth's surface, it gets emerged out in an eruption form. So most of these gases and particles, they do not just find themselves into the atmosphere. They are released through landforms. Like the, they are released through land features like the volcanic eruptions. So the next image here is the image of a volcanic eruption. Where you have this is the earth surface. Then we have the magma that is in red and yellow, you see that this magma becomes too hot to be, uh, to, to be, to be in the, under the earth's surface and later on it is ejected outside and it is in the form of uh, ashes, the other gases are released into the atmosphere. Let's look at the significance of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So the first significance of carbon, di carbon dioxide is the controlling of photosynthesis. You have learned about photosynthesis in your primary school and also the bi biology part. For the case of geography, so photosynthesis only changes sunlight into chemical energy. Then later on, it splits the water into liberate oxygen and fixes carbon dioxide into sugars. So photosynthesis, this is the process that enables plants to make their own food. And uh, plants make their own food using carbon dioxide. So through the sunlight, chemical energies are split. Uh, the sunlight will change the chemicals into energy. Then it splits the water and fixes carbon dioxide into sugar. So to continue with photosynthesis, we have this image over here. So this image explains just what I have finished saying. Where you have the sun, then this sun changes the chemicals into energy. We also have the water that is broken down and the carbon dioxide that is, uh, is fixed into sugars, that is going to help the, that is going to help the plants to make their own food. Then after carbon dioxide has been fixed into sugars, it will release oxygen into the atmosphere. So that is where we get oxygen from. Then this oxygen is used by human beings and plants. As a result, it, it leads to a cycle where we have plants using carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the the, the gases that we breathe out as human beings and animals, then after photosynthesis has taken place, oxygen is released into the atmosphere. The other significance of carbon dioxide is that it absorbs solar radiation. So solar radiation, this is the amount of heat energy that is gotten from sun or any source of light but mostly for geography, we will talk about the sun as being the source of light. So in absorbing solar radiation, the incoming solar radiation it is absorbed and later it acts as a shield against the outgoing radiation from the earth. Outgoing radiation may be as a result of reflection. So the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it will absorb some of this incoming radiation and it will shield us against the outgoing radiation. And through this absorption, it will help to keep the Earth warm. So it warms up the Earth's surface. Moving on to the effects of carbon dioxide. Uh, carbon dioxide has the advantage part of it and it also has the effect part of it. So just to mention a few of them, uh, carbon dioxide increases absorption of outgoing radiation, thereby warming the lower atmosphere. So what happens if a lot of carbon dioxide is, is absorbed by the, a lot of uh, heat is absorbed by the carbon dioxide. So it ends up warming the at lower atmosphere. And when there is too much absorption of the radiation that is taking place, you see that the lower atmosphere will become too warm. As a result of this, it will also lead to global warming 
and other temp temp it will make temperatures to rise. If the temperatures rise, you see that a lot of evaporation is going to take place. The, it will also lead to some kind of drought because there's too much temperature on the earth's surface. The other effect uh, is that studies have shown that carbon dioxide has increased by 20, 25% due to industrial revolution. It's not only about uh, carbon dioxide being in the air. A lot of factors is leading to carbon dioxide being, uh, being evolved to the air in the atmosphere, such, such as industrial liberation and deforestation and also intensive cultivation. When we have too much plants in the, on the earth surface and all these plants emit or, uh, emit or when we have too much plants in, uh, on the earth surface we are, and we cut down trees, this is going to lead to a lot of carbon dioxide accumulating in the air. And this carbon dioxide accumulating in the air is going to cause uh, an increase in warming of the atmosphere. And as the atmosphere warms, there are also other consequences that comes along with that. To continue with our uh, effects of carbon dioxide, we see that carbon dioxide has uh, has its own effect depending on the depending on the quantity and uh, pressure that is being put on the atmosphere. So carbon dioxide is known to absorb some of the infrared heat radiation that is being emitted by the earth to the earth's surface and being re radiated uh, part of it to the surface. So as as it absorbs some of this infrared, it is later on going to lead to a uh, warm lower atmosphere. And uh, as I have just said that as the atmosphere warms, it comes with its own effect. Let's move on to the ozone layer. So on the ozone layer, we, we are talking about the layer that is between the earth's surface and the higher atmosphere, that is the, the skies. So the ozone layer, you have just heard about it. It has been on the environmental talk for a long time now. So the ozone layer is a layer of oxygen gases in the stratosphere. Soon we are going to look about the structure of the atmosphere in the next lesson. And we will look at what is a stratosphere. So the ozone layer is what is in the middle of the earth's surface and, uh, and the sun. So the ozone layer is the one that absorbs radiation that is going to prevent us from UV light that is going to cause cancer. So what is the significance of the ozone layer? The ozone layer has its own significance in that it absorbs UV rays. You have heard uh, severally that the UV, UV rays causes skin cancer. And this rays in full, it's called the ultraviolet B rays. And this is a wavelength of solar radiation. The rays, as the sun shines on the atmosphere, uh, we have these rays that are going to be absorbed by the ozone layer. And some of these rays end up are cancerous, and we know that cancer does not have a, a cure. So most people are, are advised to apply sunscreen to prevent from direct heating of the sun. Let's look at the significance of solid particles in the atmosphere. So we see that the atmosphere is, is not just made up of gases only. There are also solid particles that are in the atmosphere and they are of very importance to the human beings. So these particles get into the atmosphere from plants, fires, dust, volcanic eruptions and soil particles. Uh, they can, the volcanic eruptions, they have happened severally in the world and the, the particles that were inside the earth's surface, as they be ejected, they get into the atmosphere. So the particles in themselves, they help to reduce intensity of solar radiation. We see, we see that the sun every day is getting intense, so the dust particles in the atmosphere, it helps to absorb some of this light that is coming into the earth's surface. As a result, it is, it is also going to reduce some of the effects of the solar radiation. 
to continue with that, we see that these particles, uh, they are very important because they will also help in condensation of moisture that settles around them. And after condensation, it is going to lead to rainfall. And this rainfall is the one that is going to help us in agriculture. So we have come to the end of our lesson today. And an assignment I have with me for you. So in this assignment, we are going to answer the questions that we have just learned in this lesson. So number one, what is the significance of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Number two, describe the composition of the atmosphere. Number three, give Number three, describe an ozone layer and give its significance. So those are the three questions that you have, that I have taught you today. Thank you. I hope you, you have enjoyed this lesson. Uh, we are talking and looking about the structure and composition of the atmosphere. If you have any questions concerning the atmosphere, just ask us on our Facebook page, that is Elimu TV. You can as well tweet us and make that tropic trend at elimo underscore ke. Thank you for watching Elimo TV.